I'm Marty Stauffer. Bird nests rank high on the list of natural wonders. Of the nearly 9,000 bird species living today, each one constructs its own distinctive and often highly elaborate nest. From the hummingbird's tiny woven cup of lichen and moss to the eagle's huge pile of limbs weighing over a ton, they come in an infinite variety of sizes, shapes, and styles. The diversity of construction materials is equally impressive. Feathers, plant down, spider webs, snake skins, not to mention almost any man-made item small enough to be carried. By their evolutionary success, birds have demonstrated that when it comes to protecting their young, a nest is best. One of the most endearing qualities of birds is their tireless devotion to their young. The time and attention avian parents spend on their offspring is almost unbelievable. Some of the smaller insect-eating songbirds make up to a thousand trips a day to feed their nestlings. To meet the needs of its young, each species has its own specialized nesting strategy. Morning doves, like other members of the dove family, have evolved a unique method for feeding their young. Squabs are fed a substance called pigeon's milk, a liquid secreted from the adult's crop. This curd-like substance has a higher fat and protein content than cow's milk. After hatching, the young are fed this nutritious liquid exclusively for several days. Then, as the squabs grow, they rely more on a diet of regurgitated seeds. most birds, family duties are shared by both parents. Parental cooperation is a good way to improve the offspring's chances, especially during the first few critical weeks of life. Some birds like the brown-headed cowbird, are much less attentive to their young. They have one of the most unusual nesting habits of all North American birds. Instead of building their own nest, they lay their eggs in the nests of other birds, a behavior called brood parasitism. While some hosts reject the foreign egg, others raise the cowbird nestling often at the expense of their own young. Cardinals and other songbirds are frequently parasitized.
A female cowbird may lay up to 40 eggs in various nests each breeding season. Even so, studies show that only 3% of her eggs ever reach adulthood, a much lower reproductive rate than that of nest building birds. It's an expensive trade off for cowbirds, whose once nomadic lifestyle may have fostered this odd nesting behavior. Originally, cowbirds inhabited only the Great Plains. They specialized in feeding on insects flushed up by the roving herds of bison. As the bison moved on, so did the cowbirds, making it impossible for them to stay in one place long enough to build nests and raise young. Today, they still follow wild herds, but more often, our domestic livestock. Though their food source is not as transient, their parasitic instincts remain. When a female cowbird visits another bird's nest, she eats or destroys one of the host's eggs. Then she quickly lays one of her own. Only one egg is laid per nest, yet this habit has caused serious population declines in some songbirds. Since the cowbirds' larger, more aggressive nestlings often dominate the food supply. For the nests which escape parasitism by cowbirds, there are different dangers. By nesting in trees, many birds, like this robin, can avoid ground-dwelling predators such as skunks or snakes. But there's little a robin can do to avoid tree squirrels. Red squirrels occasionally consume bird eggs and even nestlings. Despite squirrels and a few other tree-climbing mammals, nesting high off the ground has its benefits. In fact, fossil evidence suggests that the remarkable diversity of bird nests evolved in response to the evolution of mammalian predators. In the desert, predators emerge at night. A Gila monster prowls in search of an easy meal.
day or night, a nest full of eggs is never safe. The scaled quail can only watch as its precious egg is devoured. Gila monsters are only one of two poisonous lizards in the world. Drop for drop, their venom is more potent than a rattlesnake's. The Gila monster eats its fill and moves on. Another ground nesting bird, the willow ptarmigan, faces a similar problem. Female ptarmigan lay between six and 11 eggs. A large brood is their insurance that at least a few will survive to adulthood. The eggs need to be kept warm in order to develop, and they must be turned regularly. Turning the eggs helps to distribute the warmth evenly and to prevent the embryonic membranes from fusing with the shell. It's no wonder ptarmigan protect their nest with a vengeance. The playful behavior of these two weasels is deceptive. They are relentless hunters. As the ptarmigan flies off with one of her attackers in tow, the second weasel moves in. Intent on saving her nest, the ptarmigan returns. The weasel's persistence finally pays off. To 
compensate for the risk of nesting on the ground, both the birds and their eggs are well camouflaged. Ptarmigan are masters of disguise. As the seasons change, so does their plumage, from white in winter to mottled brown in summer. Also blending perfectly with its surroundings is a powrakeh, a close relative of whippoorwills and nighthawks. These birds inhabit the woodlands and coastal plains of South Texas. Powrakeh don't build nests. Instead, they lay their eggs on the ground. For these well-concealed birds, security lies in an ability to render themselves invisible. Another form of protective coloration is called disruptive camouflage. The contrasting plumage of a northern shrike breaks up its outline and thereby reduces its visibility. Like their parents, the nestlings have a dark eye mask. Round, shiny pupils are one of the most conspicuous features of many animals. They present a camouflage problem that is solved in many ways most commonly with eye stripes or masks. Such a color scheme tends to hide the eye within a dark, irregular shape, a technique used by many forms of life, from fish to mammals. The shrike's habit of killing small prey, then impaling its catch on thorns or barbed wire, has earned it the nickname Butcher Bird. In our western states, wherever there are clear mountain streams, you're likely to see another unusual bird, the water oozel or dipper. This semi-aquatic songbird builds a distinctive domed nest on sheer rock faces, behind waterfalls, or on midstream boulders. Dippers forage in streams, gleaning insects and larvae from submergent vegetation and rocks. They often disappear underwater, swimming through the current, using their wings as flippers. Birds take advantage of any feature in their environment which offers an added degree of protection. For water oozels, a swift moving stream is a convenient barrier to predators. An even better fortress are the tree cavities used by woodpeckers. It's believed that birds first used natural tree cavities for their nests. As competition for this limited resource grew, some birds developed the specialized adaptations and skills required to construct their own homes. The advantages of nesting in a tree cavity are so great that some birds, like woodpeckers and flickers, evolved the ability to chisel their own holes. Since the wood of dead or dying trees is soft, 
old snags are a valuable commodity for cavity nesters. One dead tree may house several different families of woodpeckers. Pileated woodpeckers, with their flaming red crests, also nest in tree cavities. Dead trees are routinely cut down for firewood or merely for aesthetics. Yet many birds depend on them for food, and nest sites. Recently, environmentalists have recognized the importance of old snags. In an effort to conserve trees, which are especially important to wildlife, biologists put up do not cut signs. In 1986, the Animal Inn campaign began in Oregon to discourage the cutting of dead trees for firewood. The program has been very successful and is now a national campaign with the slogan, There's Life in Dead Trees. As our human population expands, birds and people are going to compete more and more for land and resources. Though in some instances, birds may benefit from human intrusion. A black vulture has found this abandoned shed an ideal nest site. The future of many bird species will depend on how well they adapt to human altered habitats. Purple martins adapt very well. One reason for their successful coexistence with people is their acceptance of artificial nest boxes. As colonial nesters, purple martins welcome each other's company even during the breeding season. Though an occasional squabble between neighbors is not uncommon. Martin houses have been very effective in providing homes for these large swallows, which have lost much of their native forest habitat to human settlement. Unlike purple martin nestlings, some birds are able to leave the nest within hours of hatching. This bobwhite quail's brood is only two days old, and already her chicks are well traveled. Out in the open, the chick's movements do not go unnoticed. Even the kestrel's sharp talons are no match for the mother quail's determination to safeguard her young.
For all the energy birds invest in their offspring, the parental bond is amazingly short-lived. In the avian world, youth passes quickly. Once grown, birds have only their instincts to guide and protect them. Every bird is guided by a set of genetic blueprints dictating how, when, and where to build its nest. Yet I'm always amazed by their ability to exploit new nesting opportunities, especially in urban environments. We must be careful, though, not to overestimate their adaptability, because without adequate nesting sites, bird populations would quickly decline. Luckily, most birds instinctively know that to keep their offspring warm, safe, and dry, a nest is best. I'm Marty Stauffer. Until next time, enjoy our wild America.